sometimes it feels like yesterday. Not really, but like a memory like. Sometimes it feels like the feeling is still there, even though it happened like five years ago. Which I don't even know what that means. Six years ago? But I got out of a pretty serious relationship. I was in like a seven year, eight year relationship on and off, six years total together probably and over the course. But what's, you know, together when you're apart and it's misery. And that, I, uh, that like came to a crashing halt. The signs were always, we were there for a long time. Like, hey, man, this engine sounds funny. It's not going to last, you know, a good engineer might, well, that's funny, an engineer, someone that makes engines, um, a good engineer would tell you that maybe would have told me a love engineer. And in fact, my friends did say, it's probably not right, you know, you guys fight a lot. And it was just, it was, it was, it was right. It was good for me at the time. It was great for both of us, for, you know, I don't speak for other people much, not ever really. It was great for me. And it was uh, heartbreaking to leave that relationship. Uh, it was very hard. It was hard on my mind, too. Um, it was hard on me psychologically. It was hard because um, I, I, I got a lot of confidence from that relationship. I don't know. I got... I, I, It's kind of like building a, a sandcastle, and you fall in love with this with the sandcastle, and you it's your life's work. And one day you go to get a drink, and when you come back, it's gone because the ocean just swallowed it, and there's no evidence of it, and there never will be. And you'll sit there and think about it. Maybe you'll sit right where you 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 were when you were making the sand castle. Maybe maybe you'll sit right where that castle was, and you'll remember it kind of. The images will fade. They'll change in your mind. You'll see caricatures of a castle. You'll remember parts of it. You can describe it to people and draw it, but that castle was pretty epic. I think I went on a documentation binge, you know, I try to document so many parts of my life and I started to compensate and document like really dark places in my soul, which probably would have been better off not being documented in a way because it's like, what kind of energy do you want to put out there? Just because you're feeling it doesn't mean you have to express it to everyone in the world all the time. So I really did not have temperance. And I Then I suffered as a result. I put that suffering out there and it perpetuated it in me and in other people. I think, but definitely in me. In a, other people in me. That's how I could see it because I would think other people were and it really was just me. Seeing that, whether or not they were is up to them, really. I haven't been in a relationship since, you could say, in the the standard terms of relationship. I mean, I, I, you know, remake a lot of words. I have in the past remade a lot of words. I'll say, like, no, a relationship is like you have a relationship with your God. You have a relationship with your telephone, with your parents. You, know, you have relationships. My relationship with this phone is that I don't use it. It's still a relationship. It's because it doesn't really work. Um, so, you, you know, relativity and relating and things like that, yeah. But I haven't been in an emotionally, like, available... I haven't been emotionally available since Amanda. I... I owe her that. Um, 
I've like avoided getting into sexual relationships with girls that I find really attractive because I'm afraid that I'll really fall for them. It's like as soon as they turn and really give in, like give it, give to me, whatever, how, how you phrase that, when you turn and give it to me, like really, you know, like you'll be like wanting it and playing it, playing around, and when they're finally like, okay, and they turn to you with all their force, like with all their will or whatever, and succumb to it, to you, to, to your power, to your energy, that's what I'm like. I see like seven years flash in front of me. And it's like, this is the girl I want to be with for seven years? Because I was with an amazing girl for seven years and it didn't work out. So how do you know it's right? I feel like I met a girl, Rebecca. Uh, it, I feel like, I felt like it was right, but like, I, did that, can, can that be explained there? Like I felt it, but I didn't, my, my mind, this is my broken mind from this relationship. It was bad. I mean, we, we tortured each other, Amanda and I. We, we, this, we, we screamed and cried and it didn't really hit, but you know, the occasional slap or pound or grab. No, we didn't really hurt each other physically, but like emotionally it was breaking. Uh, and, you know, my neurons changed, but they started to fire in different patterns where I was like used to this violent aggression. And then I started to think, well, that's what love is. If you're not violently, if you're not like screaming at each other, then you must not love each other. And it's like, I, I get, I, I meet a girl that's like level headed and functional, you know, wants a lot of the same things I want out of life and wants to help people in ways that I didn't know existed until I met her, until she told me about it. And ways that I do know have existed. And it's the kind of relationship where no matter what you do, there's always a response for it. But like you can't outscape it. I don't know how to, how to describe, describe it other than that. Maybe that's love is when it functions like that. Like it's probably more than just that. You know, love's a lot of things. But it's like, you know, you can think about all the millions of things you're going to say and how they're going to respond. You can imagine and picture all the ways that they're going to respond, you know, but not the way they will respond. It's, you can't, that's what love, that's, that's the unexpected love. You know, it's like real love is not predetermined. It's not a, you didn't get it out of a book. It's not a, um, uh, it's not a pa prototype. It's not a palette. It's not a, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of when you get a template? Love's not a template. Love is, it's not love. Love isn't the right word. It's just I'm just describing this one aspect, of this one thing, you know, that happens to, to be there with uh, the, this re relationship um, with this girl, Rebecca. And a lot of people probably but like I don't know. To assume that it's going to be something I wasn't expecting is expecting that it's going to be something. And I've learned that, that it just doesn't work. You just never know. And if you know and you think you know, you don't know because you, you it can't be what you think it is because if you think it's something, then you're not, it's not it. You know, it's like you, you've created, even if it's like kind of like what you thought it was going to be, it's still different. It, you can't, real life is not a thought process. It's more than a thought process, and it will always be more than a thought process. And r real love is an interaction between two creatures that is not a one-sided argument. It, 
it is organic and undescribable. I'll spend my life describing it. What the fuck? What other better job is there that you can think of, you know? Figuring out how many numbers are in pi? Pretty nice to meet someone like that. But you know, like I said, it was basically like I was with Amanda and we had dated and we were dating and living together and it was very serious and it was hard and it wasn't working, but it was very serious. And then I met this other girl and like for a second I was like, like the night I met her, I looked into her eyes. I'd seen her before a couple times, three times. At least a couple, couple times, I think three times in a show. I saw this show three times. My friend was directing it. And I sat on three different sides of the theater. And she was in the show. And I saw her in that multiple times. And I wasn't thrilled with her performance. I thought she was overdoing it. But, you know, I saw the show three times. It was a great fucking show called Labette at Sacred Fools. Highly recommend, fuck, reading about it at least. Walk, look at pictures of it online. Um, it was a great show, man. I was, it was first, that was like my introduction to that theater company too. But anyway, very, very magic. The theater can be very magical. You know, I, I was, I, when I met her, we just kind of locked eyes and knew, I knew, I didn't know. It wasn't a, a thought. It was just like, I knew that, um, I was going to break up with Amanda right then and it was like I I the, the pain I felt when I saw her when I looked into her eyes was so real because I knew it was the end of my relationship with Amanda and and I, I would I didn't want to accept it and rather than tell Amanda I wanted to be with Rebecca I, I told Amanda I wanted to be in an open relationship because I was afraid to break up with her and move on but it's like how do you do that how do you spend seven years with someone and then meet someone else and immediately just get into a new relationship like how is that supposed to be, and maybe I, I worry too much about other people, but like, how is that supposed to be helpful to the girl you're breaking up with? It's, I couldn't imagine doing that to someone. So I was like, I love you, but I'm not emotionally available. And I didn't really say that, but what I did was like, you know, just like, wasn't emotionally available. I, I was pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling and disgusted like just aggravated and all I wanted was like she's the most damaged person I've ever met if I can help her I can help anyone like that was my mentality so maybe maybe I was just playing in this whole like hero riding on a white horse save the day thing that I tended to have, you know, I'm a big fantasy guy. I like the uh, the fantastical nature of the savior. You know, I love, I've been playing role-playing games where you're the hero that becomes this kid that comes out of nowhere and saves the world and the universe, whatever, like so many games like that, so many dreams. And like, as a kid, you know, I, was, I wanted to be an actor because you get to be the hero on stage in some crazy situation that's like not really lifelike sometimes, like, we would pretend and play and I kind of like beat up at school and like kind of intimidated and stuff. So, but deep down, I, I always wanted to help everyone. Um, and for whatever reason, it's, you know, I found it very easy to help someone that had simple needs like Amanda would didn't know how to use email or something. And it was like, I can help her learn how to use email and she'll help me learn how to be myself, how to express myself emotionally. She'll make me scream, you know, make me uh, think. And it was a trade-off. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe what I think was love was like just me falling into that same trap of wanting to be the savior because I did think that this girl's so damaged and I didn't really like her acting, but like as the years went on, I like, I knew Rebecca 
always from like day one when I looked in her eyes, like not you know like that she was the most talented woman in the world. I truly believe that with all my heart and soul and guide and spirit and strength and number. I knew that I, I didn't know at first, but then she was aggressive and told me things about meet.org and the planet and people and behavior and fearlessly talked about hive mind and the swarm and tabu, tabula rosa, which is like the grand reset. You know, it's like a movie that I still want to make, actually. If anybody wants to get down with that, that'd be pretty fun. She told me, like, it, she was fearless. It was like she didn't care about the world. World, she, she cared. All she cared about was helping everyone. It was like, fuck the consequences. Fuck what people say. Fuck what people think. This is, you, you have to do this. And it scared the shit out of me because I immediately knew the level that we were going to was like, well, one, no turning back, obviously. It's like when you become famous, you're, you can't get unfamous. You know, you, you get, not really, you know, it's hard to get unfamous once you get famous. But I, you know, it was like, it wasn't just a fame. It wasn't fame. It was like, you're going to get shot, basically, is what I was thinking. I was like, if I give in to this girl who is telling me I'm the greatest and pushing me to be the greatest, to learn languages and to ride my bike uphill and eat fruit and not kill and love and relax. It was like all the things I ever really wanted. And I knew she would push me to death, that she did not care about me. She cared about everyone. And that was a hard thing to accept because I knew she cared about me and, and everyone, but she was willing to throw her own life away for the betterment of the human race. And I knew that she would, I believed that she would throw my life away. I think she still would. I think she still would throw her own life away if it could help other people. And that frightened the shit out of me. I want to live forever. It's silly, right? Is it silly? I want to live for a long time. I don't know why. It's like, for some reason, it's, more glorifying to spend 80 to 100 years working on a solution and finding it than it is to find it at 33 and die or, or or not find it you know and do something even crazier than what would have happened after 100 years and, and then die and not see the effects it's like I, I don't know if I really like I want to I want to see the effects of my work which I have I'm getting a headache now just with all these pos possibilities. You know, what am I, what am I, all these different dimensions of possibility. Like, there can be only one. There can be only one. This one. Uh, that scared me so much. Thinking that I would die, thinking that I was about ready to go on the journey of my life, like going down a water slide, and when I hit the bottom, that was it. I thought, I am going so crazy, and she is pushing me to go even crazier. It's like pushing me to go outside naked and stand in the street screaming until they arrest me and go to prison for 40 years and be a martyr, that kind of thing. Like, she would push me into that. I, I, I know, you know, not, not she would choose that, but like, I think if I wanted to, she would have pushed me to for some, just, I didn't have much control around her or with her, which was so weird because I'm always in my life, many, many times in my life, very much in control of myself and my situation and my friends, you know, my reactions with my friends and my friendships and things like that. I don't, call people when they tell me not to call them. I don't call people more than once usually. Like, But I decided I was going to let go of some control because I was doing that 
making YouTube videos, you know, I was being silly and getting high as fuck and just saying the stupidest shit. So just like letting go of all my ego and like worrying about this and that, just letting it go and loosening up and just kind of letting it go, you know, and it was like, great, now I know how to be a musician. You have to let it go. You can't worry about constriction and reality and wake up at this time, go to bed at this time, like that stuff's out the window when you're a rock star, when you're a musician. Like if you want to write music, you got to let it go. You got to be a little crazy, which crazy in that you don't have a lot of, though there is a discipline to music making in order, I think for me to get to that place where I was able to be free enough to like just write, I had, I had to let go of that, that control. You know, and it was that control that killed my relationship with the man in a lot of ways too. So I was happy to let it go that control, you know, happy to let it go. And the downside was, I, I was like a, a kid, like a little kid around her. I mean, I was like a, like a little baby, like a suffering aunt. I don't know how to describe it. Like I was a, I couldn't, I, I, I could stop. I, I couldn't, I didn't want to stop. I wanted to see what would happen if I didn't. And she's like, Ian, stop, you know, let's do this. And I was like, oh, crazy. Just like stroking her and smacking her, like get a reaction. All she wanted was for me to fucking chill and just be myself. But I was being myself in a very sick way. And that was not what she wanted. And so we parted ways. It was tough because we had a lot of mutual friends, and we still do. Uh, I think the trust, really, what it comes down to is that when she says, I mean, this it's been a long time, you know, but, but I work on things for a long time. I have a very long attention span. I focus on things until they're complete, until I want to stop focusing on it, usually. So it's like this weird trust, like when she says, you got to let me go, you got to let, not even me, it's like, you got to let this relationship go. I trust that. That makes the most sense. I don't love her because she's some piece of meat that I want to grab. I love her because I believe her. I trust her words. I believe her. Um, I don't know. I believe in what she says. I, I believe what she says. I, you know, how do you, I'm, I'm trying to like word it for the most effect, but I've got too much crap in my system to really cry or feel it to the extent that would benefit me, I think, right now. But I trust That's like the real love, you know, and I know they they all say that if you love someone or something, set it, set them free. And so here I am at the crossroads that I've been at for fucking 10 years, eight years, six, seven years, whatever. Let, let me go, let this go. And I'm standing there and looking at it. And it's like, I can't decide if it's like, oh, goodbye. And I turn and walk away. Or if it's like she's hanging off the cliff and I've got her arm and she's like, just let me go. And I'm like, I will never let you go. And I pull her up. I gotta do some emotional reconnaissance. I need to detox and cry all that ammonia out, and salt, all that junk in my brain has gotta just come out my eyes. Oh, not too much out my sinuses, but I'm sure it will. Last time I had some LSD once and it 
I cried and cried and cried. And it was so good. It was such a healing experience, man. And it's media that tells you that it's bad at face. It's like, and then they feed you Prozac. It's like, it's good to cry. I think if I work out, I'll probably cry. If I really break my endorphins, so I'll probably detox that heavy detox. It's been a while. It's probably why I've been having headaches. It's because I haven't been crying, even though I've been sad. So my body's been making these chemicals, and I haven't been releasing them. Huh. It's good to know. I love you very much. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to announce what I'm going to do before I do it. I might do other things, but I'm going to get some water. I'm definitely going to go to bed at some point.